Hi, I'm Ian Balsella. I'm a designer, artist, and urban gardener based in New York. The first time I bought an art piece was in Vietnam, and it was this really simple charcoal and pastel drawing of a woman with her cat. And that was the first art piece I ever purchased. And I just thought it was so beautiful that this artist that I really admired, I could have a little piece of them in my home. This is one of the first prints I ever bought. It's by Michelle Peck. She's um, a printmaker, an artist. Um, she went to my university. It's, this piece was in one of the first shows that I curated with um, Whitney Williams. The first time that I started considering myself um, a collector is really when I started noticing that I was becoming neurotic about framing and shipping. I started just going to framers to get all of my art done and then one day I just kind of looked around and realized that I had so much art around me um, and not just art from random places, from, from people, mostly women and people of color, that I really, really admired. So it became a very intentional uh, collection, and that's kind of when I started thinking of myself as a collector. I really love bringing in kind of textural pieces and overlapping it with framed pieces, you know, just making it a little more three-dimensional. I like how these hang off and make a little shadow to them kind of just breaks it up a bit. And you don't really have to always invest in framing, which is nice. In terms of style, I am really thinking about what is going to work with the rest of my collection. I'm not really thinking about the piece on its own, even if I like it. I tend to gravitate towards bodies and faces. I don't know, I'm always just attracted to those. I stray away from illustration and stray more towards photography, printmaking, and painting. This is a photograph from Sham Shui Po in Hong Kong, which is where I went to school. Um, I did this photo actually. Uh, it's just from a market and I printed it out on some rice paper. I really like the grittiness of it and it just makes me really nostalgic for Hong Kong. This is a print by Sophia Salazar. She's a printmaker, illustrator, she does fiber art too. Um, and she does a lot of things inspired by mythology. Um, so it does feel like a little bit more like that. Moving into the living room. I've never regretted buying an art piece. Really? Yeah. There have been pieces that I've bought that most of my friends do not like <laughs> and my roommate actually knocked it over <laughs> um, but everyone i've lived with hasn't liked his art piece but i love it I, it's kind of weird which is um why it's not up right now but no i've never regretted buying an art piece um i kind of like it when people have strong opinions about it even if they're negative um, moving into the living room, this is kind of where I put more of my statement pieces because I just, you know, have people here, usually when it's not COVID, and then I like to have a little bit louder art. So this is a piece that I got from Vietnam. It's a portrait of a young Vietnamese boy. I don't remember the artist, but um, we did end up tripping it all the way to Texas um, where I picked it up. I love this piece. It's really hard to curate with it, so I kind of just put it on its own. And I don't even, I didn't even stretch or frame it. I just kind of nailed it into the wall, which again, I kind of like having the, uh, the raw edges of the canvas. I think it kind of adds some more depth to it. Plus it'd be really expensive to get framed. I am always looking for a balance between negative space and the art. I, I do love when people have like a big gallery wall full of art but I do like to have some breathing room. Um, in the hallway, it's a little bit more like black and white gritty. And then in my room, that's where I wanna like feel cozy and have like a lot of greens and natural colors. So those are the pieces I chose for that. Um, I'm definitely very intentional with where I put what. I think especially in the bedroom, like 
you know, if, if I have someone over, I don't necessarily want to have like a photo of my family staring down at my bed or um, a piece that is a little bit more jarring. I want to kind of be in like a peaceful environment and, you know, maybe a little sexy. So I have my sexier pieces in there. And yeah, you know, in the living room, big, bigger statement pieces. So I really do think that art is about yourself. It's about appreciating the artist. And it's also, it is a reflection of yourself um, when, you, when you have people over. This is a print that I got in San Miguel de Allende in Mexico. Um, the artist Silvestre, she does a lot of like mythology as well. Um, and the frame, I got framed in Denver, but I was just really inspired by the molding in Mexico and I thought it really complemented the, the frame well, so I definitely invested in this one. This is by um, Adrian Octavius Walker. Um, this is part of the Sea in Black project that happened last summer, and it was basically black photographers raising money for BLM and other organizations. So this is a print that I bought from him. Um, and I like kind of, you know, again, bringing more texture and curation. So this is some sage that I picked at um, a farm that I worked at over the summer. And then just like a fig. I love figs and just adding collage and texture into things. Room? Okay. <laughs> Often I trust my instinct on buying something when I can't get it out of my head. Most of the pieces that I've bought have been when I'm traveling and I'll go in and either I have a really visceral reaction to it, like the print that I got in Mexico, um, I got like very teary when looking at it, or it's just running in my head. I'll go to the gallery or wherever I've seen it and I'll keep walking around. If by the end of the trip or by whenever the end of the day, if I, if I can't get out of my head, I'll just do it. And also when I really start thinking about how it's going to fit into my life and fit into my collection. I really love how bright and sunny it is in here. So I've definitely been really playful with the curation and kind of trying to play with space a little bit more. This piece here is by Meryl Truitt. Uh, she was actually the first gallery that I ever worked at. She did this uh, series of these cars on stilts, which was like a big thing in the South when like selling old cars. And I just love this photo, it's a metallic print. This is another photo from the Sea in Black. Uh, this is by Quill Lemons, and I just, I just think it's such a powerful photo. Definitely with photography, I, I try to be really simple with it. I don't try to do a really, you know, big frame or anything, just kind of let the photo speak for itself. This is actually um, another piece of art that I got in Mexico. It's a mezcal jug and it's from Oaxaca. When it comes to buying art and price ranges, I've found that I'm more willing to spend money on something that is going to a cause. So like the sea and black photos, those were a bit more expensive than I, what I would normally pay for a photo but I felt like it was going to a good cause. This is a print that I got in Japan, um, in Kyoto. Um, I think that it's very like romantic and very queer. Um, and I, I just found it in this like old print shop and I just thought it was, it was really beautiful and I, I like having it in the bedroom, so. These plates are really traditional in Israel. Over here, this piece this is by Chelsea Alexander. She's a designer based in New York. Um, and I'm just obsessed with her color palettes and her shapes. It's such a fun piece. And then over here, these two prints are by Sarah Vaz. She's an architect based in Oregon. I saw these pieces when I was at a gallery in Oregon. I just became obsessed with her. It was the last day I was there and I ended up um, tracking her down and getting her to to give me these prints because I just thought they were so beautiful. I've been lucky enough to collect art through my travels but now that I'm not traveling and most of the world is not traveling I really think that I've seen a surge of artists selling online and I love having a central space 
for artists to sell their work and to be promoted. So I just really love seeing what has kind of come out of this um, and kind of seeing artists have a stronger voice um, since they are kind of having to like put in more of the work. Thanks so much for watching. You can follow me on Instagram at inbalush. I post some of my own art and design and also some urban gardening tips.